with it. Uh, module name is Apex Basics and Data Base. And uh, the prox duration to complete this module is two hours and 45 minutes. That's what it gives. It might take a little longer for you to finish it. Uh, okay. Let's have a quick look at the units that are part of this uh, module. So in this module, we have got uh, one, two, three, four, five units. All right, so let's get started with the first unit, uh, which is get started with Apex. Okay, so here we are. <clears throat> so we are on the first unit of uh, this module and uh, the name of the unit is get started with Apex, estimated time to finish. It is 45 minutes, as I told earlier, uh, you might need a little extra time to finish this. Uh, that's an estimated time. Uh, however, for you to finish this might take slightly longer than that. Uh, that's fine, and uh, you know, let's have a quick look at uh, the topics that are going to be part of this unit. So it starts with learning objectives. You know, talks about get started with Apex data types overview, and then Apex classes and uh, some references to some of the resources <coughs> related to this particular unit. Uh, that's good. Uh, looks nice. So let's begin with the learning objectives. What exactly we are going to you know uh, learn in this particular unit. Um, so it, uh, after completing this unit, you will be able to describe the key features of the Apex programming language. That's good. Uh, save an Apex class and call methods with anonymous Apex. So it should allow you to uh, save your Apex code and it would also let you uh, call your Apex uh, methods uh, from the class that you have created. You can define the methods there and then you'll be able to call those methods using the anonymous code block window. Okay. and uh, uh, you should be able to use the developer console to inspect debug logs. That's excellent. All right, so let's get started. Uh, you know, get started with Apex. A bit of uh, theory about Apex, what Apex is, and a little more details about Apex language, and also you know, quickly walk you through this, and then we are going to uh, get into the next uh, part of it. Um, get started with Apex. Let's have a quick uh, look at what do they uh, you know say about Apex. Apex is a programming language that uses Java-like syntax. All right, so it's a programming language with Java-like syntax. That's interesting. And acts like database stored procedures. Uh, Apex enables developers to add business logic to system events such as button clicks, updates of related records and visual post pages. Now this part is important. So Apex is the language which is used for um, writing uh, logics in Salesforce. Uh, so for those of you who are familiar with uh, Visual Force would uh, know that Visual Force is just a markup language and is not capable of uh, writing logics. So if you want to write logics, you will need help of Apex. Now it allows you to you know, execute business logics on different uh, events like you know, on your page loads, on the click of the buttons, you know, when the record has been updated or any other DML is happening on the record. So that's something which is covered in Apex. Uh, okay. Uh, as a language, Apex is hosted. It's hosted on the Lightning platform, uh, object-oriented. It's an object-oriented programming language, strongly typed programming language. Uh, it's multi-tenant aware, uh, which basically uh, ensures that, uh, you know, code, you know, there, there are certain uh, limits which are enforced on the code to ensure that uh, some code does not monopolize the shared resources. They have, uh, you know, uh, pretty well mentioned it here. If you look at this, uh, yep. So because Salesforce is, uh, uh, you know, hosted on a multi-tenant environment or a multi-tenant server, uh, it's important that the code does not affect your code or anyone's code does not affect performance of the entire server and other uh, users on the same server. So it ensures that you know there are limits uh, enforced on the code and any code execution does not monopolize the shared resources. That's a good thing. And uh, you know that's something uh, which uh, I think we can discuss uh, a little more in details in the journal limit section. Uh, it's integrated with the database. Yeah, it's uh, straightforward to access the and manipulate records. Yeah, so Apex uh, is directly integrated with the database. It's data focused. Uh, it's easy to use, easy, easy to test and version. Okay, so custom Apex code can be saved against different versions of API. So here you have different versions of API and Apex code can be saved against different versions. So that's fine. Uh, 
Uh, quite a uh, bit of theory here. That's good. So um, quick look at the Apex language highlights like other object-oriented programming languages. Uh, so like any other object-oriented programming languages, uh, these are some of the language construct that Apex supports. So what does Apex support? Apex supports classes, interfaces, properties, collections, like any other object-oriented programming language. Uh, it supports object and array notations. It supports expressions, variables, and constants. It also supports conditional statements like if, else, uh, and things like that. And uh, also control flow statements like the loops, for loops, for loops, and all. Okay. Unlike others. So, what is, you know, the, so these are things which are similar in Apex uh, when it's compared to any other object oriented programming language. Is there something which is different? Or uh, which is not like uh, some other object-oriented programming language. Yeah. So there are some, you know, there are certain uh, features of Apex which are not exactly similar to other object-oriented programming languages. So here we have a list of those things. Unlike other object-oriented programming languages, uh, Apex supports these things. It supports cloud development. It supports triggers, which are similar to triggers in the other systems. So for people who are somewhat familiar with triggers on something like us, uh, you know, SQL uh, would uh, know this. Uh, database statements are supported, uh, you know, uh, which can uh, allow you to make changes to the database or, you know, they can, uh, you know these uh, statements will allow you to uh, store record or update records in the database. Transactions and rollbacks are supported. The global access modifier, which is more permissive than the uh, public modifier, uh, this is also supported and versioning of the custom code is supported. All right. So these are things which are not like an object-oriented programming language, but still are supported in Apex. Okay. Uh, in addition, Apex is a case insensitive language. Now this is important. Uh, Apex is completely case insensitive and uh, which would mean a capital A and a small A will mean the same thing here, right? So it doesn't matter you know, whether uh, you're, you're typing your code in capital letters or small letters. Uh, let's have a quick look at the development tools. You can write Apex and access debugging information directly in the browser by using the Salesforce user interface. Uh, you can open the developer console under your name or quick access menu. So developer console is one option. You have the option to write Apex program on the Salesforce UI. You can actually uh, write your Apex program on the developer console, which is available. Um, they're going to look uh, into the developer console in a while. And uh, you can also write Apex on a client by using the force.com IDE plugin for Eclipse. So you, know, you can basically, you also, uh, you can also use the force.com IDE plugin for Eclipse. And for those who are um, familiar with Eclipse or you know, for those who are used to writing uh, programs on Eclipse, can use the force.com IDE plugin uh, for the Eclipse. Okay. Um, now, data types overview. Let's have a quick look at the data types which are supported uh, in Apex. Apex supports various data types, including data types specific to Salesforce, uh, the S object data type. So, S object is a data type which is uh, you know, uh, native to Salesforce and it's uh, something which is not uh, available in any other programming language. All right, so let's have a quick look at uh, the data types which are available. The first one which is supported is a primitive. The primitive is the most common data type uh, which includes things like integer, double, long, date, date time, string, ID, uh, boolean, and a few more. Uh, S object either as a generic S object or a specific S object such as an account contact S object are basically the Salesforce object data types. Uh, Right, so it can be both standard or custom uh, objects of Salesforce, and uh, you can define your uh, S object data types using the name of the API name of that particular object. Like in this case, my custom object is the name of the object. Uh, my double underscore C added to this is for the API name. Okay. And uh, it also says that you will learn more about S objects in a later unit. So maybe, yeah, in the coming units, that's something which will uh, be covered. Uh, a collection uh, which includes a list or array. So this collection, a list is there are three different types of collections which uh, can be used here. Uh, so one is a list which is similar to array uh, in some of other, some other programming languages. 
So this is basically a list of primitives as objects, user defined objects, uh, objects created from Apex classes or collection, set of primitives, a map from a primitive to a primitive as object or collection. So these are different types of collections which are available. A typed list of values also known as an enum. So you can also uh, use enum, which is basically a typed list of values. Uh, user defined apex classes system supplied apex classes so these are different data types which can be uh, used in apex program now uh, we can actually uh, i have uh, you know, talked about uh, data types and details uh, in, in you know, some of my videos and uh, uh, it's it's thoroughly covered in the training sessions that we do uh, now let's quickly move into the apex collections list Okay, so list hold uh, an ordered collection of objects list in Apex are synonymous with arrays and the two can be used interchangeably. So let's have a quick look at the list. So list is you know something very similar to an array that we use in some other programming language. Uh, the following two declarations are equivalent. Okay, so if I am talking about a, you know a list of string. This is how it's defined and uh, this is how it can be defined. So list of string, give the name of the variable and new list of string, all right? And it can also be written in this way. So, you know, this and this would mean same, okay? So alternatively, the colors variable can be declared as an array but assigned to a list rather than an array. So it's the same thing, this and this. These are two different syntaxes of for representing the same stuff. Generally, it's easier to create a list rather than an array because lists don't require you to determine ahead of time how many elements you need to allocate. Uh, you can add elements to a list when creating the list or after creating the list by calling the add method.